Thank you for coming, Johan Oler from Mew. Um, Johan, uh, obviously, you come with Mew in Denmark is a is a big band, uh, but if you should talk about who you are and who you're playing with to the whole world, uh, yeah, well, I, I, I play in a in a uh, we call it an art rock band. I think is is is, is the most precise uh, description. It's a band that's been going for around 20 years, so uh, that's a long time. Uh, we play shows all over the world and release records all over the world and have done for maybe the past 10, 15 years. Um, done six or seven records, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, 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 it's what I grew up with musically, so it's kind of, I've only been in this band and one more band and that's it, you know, so I don't really know much else about music than what I've learned through Mew, really. So, uh, yeah, I also have a sense that you've been playing with Mew from, like, being teenagers or, uh, yeah. or like, yeah. four friends or five friends. Yeah, yeah. We, were, we went to school together and, uh, and like you do, you know, you start a band or, like, some people do. Yeah. And uh, most of the time it, it, it will not work out or, you know, people get other interests, but... but i don't know, there was something about, you know, the, the thing that we did that we, 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 we became pretty ambitious early on and and we were shitty players to, to be honest. So we were we were we weren't good enough to actually play other people's songs, which sort of forced us to try and write our own, uh, which was I guess lucky because the band has sort of like a, a unique kind of uh, well sound and, and, and songwriting approach. It's it, it doesn't really i mean, there's obviously references, but 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 it's 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 very much its own little entity, and I think that's that's the appeal uh, as well. You know, the, the band kind of just sounds like Mew, and um, and uh, I think you know that uh, uniqueness or whatever you want to call it stems from us just you know having to write songs out of necessity yeah. without really knowing how you did it, you know, and how or how it was supposed to be done, you know, so. For me, at least, it it it, it seemed like uh, when you came out, uh, it was kind of like, "Whoa, what's happening here?" And mm -hmm. and also, it, it, it seemed like uh, you had a very clear vision. Yeah, I, well, I think we did we did two records early on back in the back in the nineties that where we were sort of searching a bit. Yeah. I think, but but you know that's that's I think what at least that what it is what a band used to do you know you search for your identity and it takes time to mm. to, to develop something that's unique uh, and uh, I think we hit sort of upon our sound if you will on the third record where we you know we we got a record deal in England and we had all of a sudden we had a budget to work with you know like our dream producer or whatever, you know we could pick you know from the top shelf and 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 that whole experience was 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 you know, paramount in, in creating, you know, the sound that people probably associate with you, yeah. which is sort of like a mixture of something fragile and something uh, grandiose and, and the elements of something that's quite rocking and, yeah. and, 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 and a bit quirky and semi-progressive. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on, mm. but um, yeah. <coughs> as, a, as a bass player, how do you see your role in, within the band? Uh, well, I think I kind of keep the songs together. Uh, you know, the usually, usually the, the the role of the guitar has been very sort of uh, melodic and sort of riff orientated and not chord orientated. Mm -hmm. So, in order for the vocal melodies to sort of have something to sort of play up against and then to you know, to sort of create a foundation for the song. What is the song, you know? How would I pick up a guitar and acoustic guitar and play this song? It's difficult <laughs> with our songs, but but at least the, the bass has always acted as sort of like the the, 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 the focal point of, 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 you know, the melodic uh, uh, foundation, you know? Uh, and I'm by no means a flashy player, so, so I, I, I've all, always sort of let the other guys, you know, be a bit more, you know, Uh, extravagant in their playing, and, and the bass has always been pretty, pretty simple and pretty rooted, and 
and those are kind of those are also the players that I like. You know, I I, I grew up with with you know like uh, alternative rock and and and, 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 and punk rock and, and and people who played with simplicity but with a lot of directness and a lot of heart. And, and that's to me to me that's that's always why I, I like the bass because it can be a very sort of powerful instrument and. Um, and so I really, you know, I, I don't know if I should mention, if I can mention, but I, I always love Kim Deal from the Pixies, and I love a guy like Adam Clayton from U2. You know, it's like, you know, those players who always know how and when to pick the right note more than be all over the shop. You know, that they somehow have an ear for for being, at, you know, making the right change at the right time, and and that to me is is what I kind of strive for. In, in the mute context, uh, context is, is to sort of make sure that that you get those you get those uh, emotional um, uh, uh, right sort of transitions and, and, and you always you know you, you get that uh, um, uh, what's it called um, for loosening. Um, Oh, yeah. And Sorry, being Danes, by the way, talking again. Yeah, yeah. No, that, 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 release. That, yeah, yeah. That, that you get a certain resolve and release yeah. and the note. You know, I, 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 I that, that's important for me. But you know, both in music I like, but also when I play that, that you get these, you know, resolving kind of uh, and and releaseful, whatever you want to call it, uh, changes. It's, as you also said, it's you know pretty complex songs you're writing. How, yeah. how do the uh, uh, come up? How do they appear? And yeah. uh, how do you work with that? Because you're, uh, the, the the structure is really long and, and, and complex. Mm -hmm. It's not just for me. It seems like not something that necessarily comes out of a rehearsal room, but it seems like someone. But no, that's actually that, that's actually the case. You know, it just takes a very long time. <laughs> no, but but uh, I think that's that 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 has always been how we wrote ninety percent of the records. Okay, so uh, a band effort, uh, super like a primitive uh, jam based yeah. writing. You know, and oh. and I think that's why it uh, it ends up sounding. You know, like like it does. You know, uh, at least on on some of the sort of 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 our, of our you know more sort of known songs or whatever. Is is that fact that sort of four people chipped in and it probably wouldn't have sounded the same if one guy had come up with it. Yeah, I think some of the of that weirdness or that sort of uniqueness stems from four or three or however many we are in the band at that time. But mm -hmm. but that people. That people chip in with their vision of what is logical yeah. at the given time, you know, and, and that creates this, you know, that three brains or four brains uh, act better than one, you know, and then, sure. and I think there's a there's a magical element to that when it works. And I'm not saying it's for everybody. I'm not saying it's the right way to work. Period. But I'm just saying that works for what, you guys. Yeah, it works for us. And, and and when you get those, you know, four brains working together, you know. It, Becomes this creature that that no no single person could have come up with, and I kind of like the idea of that from an, an artistic at, at least, point of view. Yeah, at, at least from from my point of view, that is the reason why I play music, right? Yeah, I think yeah. it's, a, it's 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 the reason why a lot of people start bands is that yeah. is that that there's a big uh, you know social element to it as well. You know that you're hanging out with your friends, and it's a it's sort of like a continuation of. of you know, having play dates and playing with your toy cars. Now you're just playing with a drum kit and a bass and a guitar or a yeah. keyboard. So you've been, you know, playing since the mid '90s. Yeah, yeah. early '90s. Early '90s. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, now it's 2016. How do you, you know, stay fresh? Uh, I I think it's just because it's it's fun. I I, I like the I like the. Um, I like the creative process. I like um, I like touring, yeah. and I like um, I like that we do something together that's um, almost like bigger than the individ individuals. You know that that we that we go up there and we, and, we, and we do this thing together that's just bigger than us. I, I think that's a good and and we on top of that get to share it with a lot of people. You yes. know, and, and that's just a really 
rewarding uh, feeling. I think it's. Uh, I mean, in terms of in terms of keeping you know myself uh, inspired and stuff like that, I, I think that you reach a certain point as a band where you have a sound and you have something that you sort of know is works for you as a band. Uh, and, and that sort of becomes the main influence in a way. Uh, I really don't listen that much to other people's music, to be honest. I, I don't even listen that much to our own music. <laughs> but it's, I love the creation and I love the, I love the fact that we, I, you know, we, we never shared a, you know, just to get back to the beginning, we never shared a practice space with anybody. We always had this own little bubble you know, we were in a weird harbor somewhere north of Copenhagen, yeah. and we just had this, this little room that was just our little world. And I, I honestly believe that some of that weirdness or, 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 or uniqueness about the band stems from not listening to the guys next door. Because yeah. it was just like, I don't and, and And to this day, that's kind of when we're doing music from you, I kind of just shut everything else out. Because it's not about what's hip at the moment. It's not about, you know... I mean, I, I have tons of bands that I love and, and, and that I probably, that taught me what good music is. And, and, uh, and I probably, you know, I probably pull them out of the back every now and then without knowing. <laughs> Sometimes maybe I do know, but, but it, I, I, you know, you, you got a musical, a musical vocabulary at, I think, when you're around, I don't know, 18, 20. And that's kind of, it kind of stops. You know, you, 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 have, a, you have a period of, of, I don't know, five years where you're just like a sponge and you can suck up all, you know, all the new music that's out there and that's really exciting and, and then you reach a certain point where I think you just, you kind of know what you like and uh, for me that's kind of it, you know, I, I don't listen to very much new music, it doesn't really, I'm not saying there's not good music being made, but I'm just saying it's, it's just, I don't know, for you maybe? It, it, no, it's just, it doesn't really interest me that okay. much and um, and, I, you know, without sounding like an old fart, uh, I, I think it's just, I just kind of know what I like and I kind of know what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. And that kind of becomes the main influence, I think. Yeah, and I guess it's it also one of the benefits of getting older. Yeah, you, you, yeah I, I guess you sort of, you just, at some point you figure out what it is you like. I, at least I hope, you know, otherwise I would be really confused, I think. And uh, I don't like being confused. So, so knowing what you like and knowing, you know, what you want to do and what you want to aim for is, I think, is crucial when you create something. You've got to have some kind of vision of what you want to do because these days, technically, everything is possible, you know, and, and, and you kind of have to, I don't necessarily think you've got to limit yourself in the creative process, but you, I think it's a good thing that you have certain creative boundaries that you know works for you, you know. So just to skip to something else, uh, you're in the making of a record, or mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, how's that going? And no, it's 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 going great. You know, we we've written a lot of songs and we're demoing them. You know, which is something that we haven't really done for the past two or three records. No, the past two records we didn't really do demos, and and it's actually kind of fun to get back into that. You know, that's something that, that, that being on the road teaches you, that, that you need to be able to play these songs if you're a rock band. You know, if you, I mean, it, at least that, that those are the songs that you end up playing again and again and again, other songs that feel good when you play them. And, yeah. and uh, so you can create something really, you know, intricate in the studio, but if it sounds shit when you play it, it's not going to be played, you know. So, so I think that that's one thing that we learned from this past year of touring, that... that it's just cooler if, if it sounds good in the already when we create it. It just it, it'll just be a song that that will be will be happier about. So um, so demoing is uh, it's going on and it's going well. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, just to finish off uh, this interview, um, do you have any advice for a an aspiring a young cat that is trying to becoming a pro? <laughs> that kind of well, I I came became a pro by total coincidence, you know. I, it was never uh, my plan or anything like that, you know. I didn't go. I've never been schooled at, at playing or anything like that. I, if it hadn't been for that, for you, you know, if it hadn't been for the other guys also wanting it, it 
fuck, man, I would have been an architect or something. <laughs> you know, I, I would have, you know, I wouldn't have been a musician, I think. And um, and I'm happy that I am. It should always be driven by passion and not about, wow, would this be a cool move? Maybe I could get like a hit on the radio. Or whatever. Yeah, I think that I think I think that uh, will work all over the world. Right? Yeah, that's probably yeah, a universal you, thing. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. So thank you. For yeah, thanks a lot, one. Yeah, pleasure. To you. Hi there. Here in Copenhagen in Rhythmic Center. And here with Johan Wohler. And uh, been doing a tone print for the Spectacom pedal. So uh, you're not normally playing with, you know.